We're on. Hello. Welcome to Sweet and Sour. Nice to have your company. We're about to start. Thank you, Brandon. It's got the coffee. I've got the letters. And they're a bit of a giggle. We've got some of your favourites on the show tonight. We've even got Joe Bailey, you know. Hair man, Australia's leading hairstylist. <sighs> Princess Diana. All the supermodels. Yeah, he's on tonight. That's just brag value. OK, let me tell you what the, the letters are. Here we go. First one tonight, I watched Peter Evans. Peter Evans is not on the show tonight. But I watched Peter Evans on the Sunday night program where, where he was advocating for water without fluoride, paleo diets and safe sunscreen. I was really incensed. OK, second letter tonight. I still have an uneasiness going off in my head and don't know what the panel think. Well, he's about to find out. Oh no, it's a she. She's going out with someone who's doing drugs. Is there a future? What do you reckon? Final letter tonight, it's time for men to go. Sounds like Big Brother, doesn't it? Sounds like men to go. Time for men to go. It's time for men to go. From positions of power and politics, right? Stephanie of West Torrens in South Australia. Let's see if it's time for men to go, according to the panellists. We'll see you very shortly. Don't go away. All the panellists are coming in right now. See you in a minute. Got a problem, big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby, it's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. It's time for Sweet and Sour. It's time for Sweet and Sour. It's lovely to have your company tonight. And who's on the panel tonight? We had him last week, but fresh from an appearance of... What's it called, Joe? The Housewives... Real Housewives of Sydney. Real Housewives of Sydney. How was that for you? It was fun. It was really good fun. <laughs> and what are the ladies like? Are they all oh, different personalities? Gorgeous. <laughs> all of them. They're just divine. Thank you for coming back for another week. Oh, That's would, terrific. Yeah, I would visit the world. Oh, good on you. OK, we're going to have you next time you're in Perth as well, all right? OK. All right, done. Hello, Margie. Hi, and now we're sitting with the Real Housewives of Perth. Oh. oh. Of wow, it's just getting better and better, <laughs> isn't it? So we're going to change your title. Should we put Real Housewife of Perth from Oh, that would be we? hideous. No, no. I would never go on one of those shows because I just think, oh, no good can come of oh, it. Well, I mean, really, it's hang just on. hell. You just blew the opportunity. There might have been a producer out there going, hmm, we might do and one I'd of Perth as well. And I'd love to go well. on that show. <laughs> There is no business like show business. <laughs> Lovely to have you. Hello, Alex. Would you like to go on that show? Oh, I think I'm very controversial, don't you? You're controversial everywhere you go. Why I should that show be I any different? I can't hold my opinions in. Oh, good. You know that? Okay. Oh, viewing. Good, good viewing. Yeah, That's probably. why you're on this show. <laughs> <laughs> always. Yep. Always, always. All right. That was a quiet moment there, Gary. We don't have quiet moments I on know. this show. But look Where? at the handsome guy I'm sitting next Hello, to. Hello, Piers. Hello. Welcome back, Sue. Thank you. Yeah. I haven't been on Real Housewives. I've Would never you been like invited. to be? Very I'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? <laughs> would, they have, would they ever do that a show with equality? just blokes? Yeah. They've got to get one in Perth, don't you think? They have to get nah. one. Nah. Actually, I wonder why they haven't done a male They will. They will. Oh, they're everywhere. Oh. If there's money the to be made, money. here we go. First letter. It's called My Doctor Rules. Dear panel, I watched Pete Evans. You know who Pete Evans is, everyone? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. I watched Pete Evans on the Sunday night program where he was advocating for water without fluoride, paleo diets and safe sunscreen. I was really incensed that a celebrity medico was brought on the same show to counter whatever Pete had to say. The medico had zero proof of any counter-argument that he put, but simply because he was an MD, he arrogantly sat negating anything that Pete had to say and added that he should stick to cooking. Here's the truth. Don't you love it when somebody says Here's that? Here's the truth. Here's the truth, as you see it. Doctors do not study nutrition in their six years of initial study, yet they are held out to be irrefutable experts by virtue of their elevated status and standing in the community. Again, they know nothing about nutrition and, for that matter, matter toxicology. They have to send you to an expert in these areas whenever they are presented with these issues. I don't, much, I don't know much about fluoride in water, nor the paleo diet, and perhaps you can enlighten me. But I can tell you that I have extensive knowledge in sunscreen technologies, and many, if not most, are exceptionally effective and work to block the sun. 
Likewise, most of these contain toxins that can be absorbed through the skin. As I understand it, Pete Evans simply uh, said, choose a, sun a good sunscreen that is not toxic. How can that be a bad thing when it is common sense? It is because it's not coming from a medical doctor. Why do we elevate doctors like this? Who should we listen to, Alex? Lots of issues in there. Who do we listen to? Doctors, paleo diets, bits and pieces. What's your take on uh, uh, name withheld, believe Mr. it or not, Mr. from Sorrento in WA? Mr. No, no name. No, no name. Name withheld because you don't, doctor, you don't want me to call you <laughs> names like idiot or wanker or asshole. Anyway, because I do. So yeah, I do, usually. <laughs> but, I mean, OK, everyone's entitled to their opinion, but you, who do you listen to? You listen to yourself. You should know what's good for you and what isn't. So, um, and who I'll can do your own and who can afford sunscreen these days? It's so expensive Is today. It? Oh my God! You know, if you want to get a really good one, I mean, same with car washes and that. There's so many chemicals in car washes because I used to sell all those products, and they never tell you what's in them because it's poisonous, and you always wear gloves. So you should always. You just don't know. Your skin absorbs lots of things. It's the biggest. What is it, the biggest organ. organ on the body, you know, because it just absorbs anything. And so, um, yeah, you should have enough common sense to know what to do, to it do and what not to do. So Good science is good science. Go and know, find it. And like Pete Evans, you know, I used to think he was great till I saw his girlfriend. Oh, my God. <laughs> if he wants everything natural, what's he doing with her? She looks like this. Have you seen her? No. Her lips are like this and her face is all puffed up and it's just all that plastic surgery. It's really well, sad. Did actually show really, little, really sad. Little snippet of it on the phone. Natural's and better. She no. Okay. I don't mind it. No, you didn't see her interview. P.S. We'll What's going on here? You. Gee, that's a hard act to follow. I don't know if I've got the facial expressions. Oh, Look, uh, you can do it. I, th <laughs> I, I think the situation is um, your doctor is not the messiah, whether female or male, and um, always get a second opinion if it's something that's. Uh, you know, really a health issue. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if it's just a course of antibiotics or something. But when it comes to this, I think, good on you, Pete. I don't watch your show because I don't like those types of uh, hyped up shows. This is a good show. I'll start watching this from now on. <laughs> but, uh, you can come back. <laughs> great great talent. No great problem. talent. But uh, no, I, I think Pete's opened up a great conversation. A lot of things I don't know about here. But it's so easy. Just fact check. I mean, just fact, uh, check. fact check. Get online, fact check. Be careful how you do it because if you you always get the answers you want if you type in a certain way of typing. So uh, say, is sunscreen you know um, poisonous? And uh, I guess get your answers from not someone that's trying to sell sunscreen, but a medical authority on it. Make sure you put the right Joe, algorithms in. Yep. Yeah. Look, I think there's a few issues here. Firstly, I think that Pete Evans looks fantastic himself. So mm. if it's working for him, then it may well work for yeah. you. Um, I don't think doctors are the be and end all either. Somehow in all this name withheld, you've answered all your own questions anyway with, by asking so many. But um, self-analysis is always good. <laughs> you know, I think, I, I agree with you, Alex, I think you should work it out for yourself and and, and I think he was just giving, I think he was just telling you what works for him yeah. and the doctor was telling his opinion and I think you should get your own. All right, Margie, final word to a woman. What's going on? Well, Pete Evans, do you like him or not? Oh, I do like Pete Evans and I do think he do looks healthy, yeah, so fine. I quite like that. I'm not sure that all of his opinions are what I would want to absorb, but at the same time, I think, you know, there's lots of people who get up on a soapbox and but tell their opinion. To them, though, That's right, so he can say anything he likes. In fact, all of us could give, give an opinion tonight. And really, it's up to me to look at all the facts that I've just been given, sort it into the baskets that I want. I can find out. more information if I want to, or you know, be satisfied with that. Be and responsible. We move on. Yeah. Be responsible. No one is going to care more about your health than you and your loved ones. Mm -hmm. Nobody else. You know, mm -hmm. even the health food providers—they're there for profit. You go to a doctor, so you pay him. Well, they I should care, should they? they? you got a smart Google. Research it yourself. They're the people who live the longest, apparently, as well. The people who actually take an interest in their own health. When we come back, speaking of health, we're going to be talking about how healthy it is when you're in a relationship with someone who's doing drugs. Is that healthy mm. or not? Uh, Time to move on. When we come back, does it? Yeah. Like what? Did you watch that program? Getting in touch with Sweet and Sour is easy. Just head to sweetandsour.net.au to send us a letter. And while you're there, why not check out our past episodes? 
Plus, don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And for a behind the scenes look at Sweet and Sour, check us out on Instagram. For every letter writer tonight, we're going to send you to the movies, courtesy of NRC Communications and Natalie Cameron. And the movie we're sending you to is Their Finest. Has anybody seen it yet? No. Not yet. No. Not You're yet. We look forward to it. Oh, okay, if you're well behaved yeah, on tonight's show. Drug deluded, dear panellists, we met on New Year's Eve and we've been happy to be together ever since then. We went out with all his friends last week and he disappeared, uh, disappeared for about 10 minutes to go to the loo, so he said. His mates asked me how I managed to cope with his drug taking. I was in total disbelief. I had absolutely no idea how he managed he managed to keep it from me for the entire three months. I couldn't sleep that night and confronted him the following morning. He didn't deny it. If anything, he was very straight out and honest. He says he's in control of it, and given that I had no idea who was even doing it, he convinced me that he is very much in control. He even said to me that his drug taking is far better than taking alcohol, and that he's never acted like an idiot as drunks do. I'm writing to you because I still have an uneasiness going off in my head and want to know what the panel think. Do I try and get him to stop? Do I do nothing? It's only been three months, but it's been the best relationship I've ever had, but I'm just so uneasy about it. It comes to us from Delvine of Collingwood in Victoria. Pierce, first up on that one. Thank you. Hi, Delvine. Um, in control, that's kind of subjective. So mm. if his friends yep. are, are telling you that there's a problem, well, there's probably a problem. And if he's also going to the toilet, well, that's also an issue right there. So why don't you ask him if whatever drug he's taking to do it in front of you, if he doesn't feel it's an issue. And uh, yeah, look, if it's ice or something like that, move on and move on quickly. It's never gonna get better. Um, if it's, can't be marijuana, it can't be, maybe it's cocaine, I've never tried it. I don't know. I, I, look, I think that it sounds to me like a red flag, I'd, I'd move on. Al? Oh gosh, in control. Yeah, I, I read that and I thought, you know, I went out with a guy that was um, a few years younger than me and he was right into um, smoking marijuana, smoking cigarettes, taking marijuana. He used to do ecstasy and um, other oh my things, gosh. you know. And like, he, 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 it was all, like, no wonder you, you're having a really good relationship because you're not really having a relationship with him the real him, you're having a relationship with a drug-induced him. And like that's all fun until when they start to take it out on you or, or they get into fights and stuff like that. They have no control of who they are because they're drug-induced. And I, I see warning signs all over this. You need to get out of that relationship because, or, or make him have a choice, you know, me or the drugs. Because, you know, it's drug-taking, it's illicit drugs, because if he's going into the toilet, it has to be a powder kind of drug. And it, it just, doesn't sound good. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm with you too. I think, you know, if you value yourself and, you you know, you manage to land You never this know what's in chemical drugs as well. You never know what you're going to get. You know, you're a valuable human being. Move on. And it might convince him to... Think about his ways. Think yeah. about his ways. Margie, you if you're a drug addict, you won't. Do you know, I think that in any relationship, your foundation is very important. So if you don't have the same you know, process of thought, if those things aren't okay with you, then you're actually sitting in very unstable ground. So to me, you know, probably drugs, no drug, what drug, doesn't sort of matter. The fact it's is, it's not suiting you. You're already questioning it. Alarm so you, bells. Yeah, you're on just different journeys and maybe this isn't the person for you. So, you know, long term, I know it's all fun right now until someone calls the police. But <laughs> really, no, but at the same time, you know, really, obviously this isn't the way you choose to live. No. So how can you start a relationship on such different platforms? I don't understand that. So, you know, to me, yep, yeah, you you know, I'd be like, oh, is that the time already? I got a phone yeah, yeah. call at three in the morning from yeah. the guy I dated and he didn't even know who he was because he'd been beaten senseless. He knew your oh, number wow. at three o'clock in the morning. Huh? He knew your number at three o'clock oh, in the morning. Oh, it's on speed dial. dial. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> Joe? Um, <laughs> Delvine, you say in here that you're in total disbelief. I'm also in total disbelief at how you could be dating somebody for three months and not know that they were on drugs. I'd probably get on them too if I was you. <laughs> and, um, and try and work a few things out here because, um, no, clearly you have to 
you, you can't start a relationship with somebody that's going off to the toilet and doing illegal drugs. So I'm with the rest of you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bail. We have a quorum. Oh, no. yeah. I think you bail the because party. you've only been in it for three months for yeah. a start. Yeah. What happens if, if you'd been in it for two years? Well, you know, it's all so romantic, isn't it? They met on New Year's Eve. He goes off to the toilet while she's having dinner. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. He's got a funny sniffing <laughs> oh, I think he's got allergies. How do you redeem it? How do you redeem it if you've been there for for two years and he's just started doing drugs and you've just become aware of it? Do you help him through it or That's do you flick him, flick him then too? Cut and run. Even if you've been there for two years? No, no. Two, I would just, years. honestly, no, because, you know what, he and I actually fundamentally have nothing in common. So, you know, what I've been looking at is actually a false front. And so I've got to go, really, this is actually just not for me and I've got to move aside. And while he's standing in the front of the line, he's blocking all the good people behind him. So I'd be like, got to go. Okay. Cool to be kind. Okay, yeah. what happens if you've been in a relationship for five years or longer and all of a sudden your partner's starting to do drugs? Because that's what happens. What do you do? Do you cut and run it's, then it's and say... No, it's a dead end. It's a, it's a no way road. Do you help them out or do well, you just you say see you, you later? You can't really help them because no, they're so you dependent. Can. You can... You can encourage them into a rehab and you can well, wait for them if you're mad in love with them. But she met him on New Year's Eve. Yeah, for this one. Best all this time. It's been five minutes. Yeah. Delvey, yeah. quorum here. Universal acceptance of out the door, mate. When we come back, um, it's time for men to go, apparently. In politics and positions of power, it's time for women to step up and take over. Do we agree? We'll see what the panel have got to say after this. Don't go away, more of Sweet and Sour. See you then. Most people think I'm sour, but my mum says I'm sweet. Why don't you tune in and find out for yourself? Welcome back to Sweet and Sour. Here we go with the last letter titled Girl, uh, Girl Power. Hello, Sweet and Sour panellists. It's time for men to go from positions of power and politics, that is. Have a look at the last few thousand years that have been dominated by that most primitive of species, the human male. The history of our world, because of the testosterone fueled male brain, is one, of, uh, one full of violence and war. And in positions of power, they have time over demonstrated that they are so eager to send others into battle to prove themselves right. Simply have a look at the relationship between Bill Shorten versus Malcolm Turnbull. It's so war-footed. Who can be the most aggressive wins? And in a world dominated by male-created environments, we remember only too well how Julia Gillard as Prime Minister fared. Does anyone seriously believe that our parliaments would have the same design and adversarial operation if they were designed by women? Of course not. And you can bet your bottom dollar, women in a female controlled body politic would not be sending their sons nor daughters off to fight meaningless wars. So panellists, I ask all of you, how do you see the future of our planet if it was to be run entirely by women and the influence of the male banished forever? It comes to us from Stephanie in West Torrens in South Australia. Have they got any female politicians there? Mm. Just a few. No, Mm, all right, Joe. First up on that one. What's the biggest uh, load of treasure. nonsense I've ever read in my entire <laughs> in my entire life? Coming I'm... straight off the Housewives <laughs> of what? Yeah. Imagine, imagine putting them in and control. And you know, would they be the ones in control? That said, I adore women and I work with women all day. But I, I think that is so sexist that whole thing. But if we were to sort of. Um, imagine what it would be like if the world was run by women it would probably be a different place and it well it definitely would be a different place because you know aren't women from venus for better or for worse well it, it's untried uh, look look back look back there might be some sort of um merit in all this but i can't bear all that um you know you have to have so many women on a board and you have to have you affirmative know, action. Yes, I think it should be done on merit, not yeah, on what sex absolutely. you are. Yeah, yeah. And Julia Gillard, mentioned in here, <laughs> is well regarded as the worst Prime Minister Australia's <laughs> ever had. So, <laughs> is well regarded. Nothing as to the... do with her being a, being a woman at all. But she didn't I... get a chance, though. Oh, God, yeah. she had more than she enough chances. She would have been hoodwinked too many times, you know. Anyhow. Men, they don't want to be... Did she not get a chance because the world of male domination actually pushed her to act like a male and do all those exercises that, in the end, 
brought her down? No, I didn't get a chance because she, she was a over, clown. Yeah, she was in too far, uh, over her head. Over I her head. She was All right, Margaret. Yeah. And Margaret Thatcher, you know, who was another very strong woman, who was the very Prime strong. Minister of England, she didn't mind a war. She didn't. Mm. She Hillary didn't win Clinton Argentina. Was a war. What's that? Hillary. Hillary's a warmonger yeah. as well. She wanted to. Uh, and so do we look at them and say, well, hang on, they're operating like men because they have to operate like men because the, des the same parliamentary design and adversarial operation which was put together by men necessitate that sort of behaviour? Well, I would like to think that, that you can't sort of say people operate like a man or a woman. I'd like to think that on their merit they could be anything they want to be, mm. both ways. Margie, are you a lover or a fighter? Oh, I think I'm a lover actually, but saying that, I do think that we need a balanced world and I think that there's a place for everybody and I think different parties bring um, you know, different things to the table. So I actually What's don't... a balanced world in your view? Well, I think that the views and uh, you know, what, what men bring to the table and what women bring to the table are both important things. And I think if we only have men or only have women, it's very unbalanced. So I think that in a, a perfect world, we would actually have a mix of people who are, you know, good at sort of their foresight for all of us. And I think that that's a healthy place to be. I don't think, like Joe said, I totally agree with you. I don't think it should be, you know, anything about if you're a man or a woman. I think it should be all about if you're capable of the job. Personally, I myself, you know, this whole Julia Gillard thing, I remember it was like, oh, she's the first, you know, female Prime Minister. Well, it shouldn't have been anything about her being female. It should have just been about her being a Prime Minister. Um, you know, her sex at that point was irrelevant. And I think that, well, you know... not necessarily. She was the first female Prime Minister. Yeah, I know, That's... but she she was a Prime Minister. Yeah, you know, but it says we've actually progressed to a point where, you know, 100 years ago, that would never have been thought of at all. At Just all, like a it's a president. you know a mark in our society that we've actually progressed to accepting women overall as. Well, we were yeah, the second country in the world equal. to have the vote after New Zealand, so we're quite progressive. We've we are pro quite mm. progressive. Mm. Uh, you know, I think there's a place but for everybody. Western Men Australia and women. had Carmen Lawrence as the first woman premier as well. Sorry, I do not I recall. Her. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Carmen Lawrence. All right. No, our... look, you know, the thing is, it's a still a man's world, and when they start paying women the same amount as they pay men, then it'll be equal, you know, like I was watching a, another... So it's just money for you? No, it's just another documentary I was watching about today <laughs> and how today it's still a like you can go for the same job, you do the same work, you could be a, a woman doing more than the man but he'll get paid more than you and then, and then they showed um, a documentary about, uh, it was actually on the news, how they had two dressing gowns, a man's one and a woman's one. The mm. man's one had piping around it so it had a little bit more work done. Mm. That was $29 and the woman's one was $39. Mm. And like same with haircuts and stuff. You go into a hairdressing salon, it'll cost a woman over hundred dollars to get her hair done, where a man can go in and get his done for like fifteen to twenty dollars. We're treading on your territory here. You know, John. it's just. I know, there's a lot more to. I know, but there's the still, man. there's still. Well, there's a whole blow dry, and there's, there's, there's a there whole lot more. To it, yes. But, it, but the I'll thing is, women minutes. always pay more, and it's it's proven, it's fact. Women pay more, but Last they word. get paid less. Come on, Piers. Okay, I think Penny Wong was from South Australia. She, well, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Treasure. Anyway, um, still look, is. I, I think it's an interesting conversation. It is reverse sexist, but that's why it's interesting. And um, I think if we went back in time, it wasn't always a political system that ran the place. Yeah, you know, back in the 1500s, we had monarchs, and most of them were women. And during the monarchies, <laughs> were they? Really? they were more vicious and more more wars ever. About 30 or 40, 50 percent more war while the females were in charge. I mean, think of Bloody Mary, uh, Cleopatra. You know, we've forgotten a Bloody few of the classics. Actually, I saw a movie. Yeah. That was yeah. Japanese so, Japanese. and then I guess oh. if you, if you did actually have this rule and you wound Mary it back Peter. a few years, we'd have to get rid of a few people too, like Nelson Mandela. What a bastard he was, you know. And that Gandhi, you know, warmonger. <laughs> yeah. And that Lincoln, you know, abolished so, slavery. Wouldn't want that. So we've had a know? few good ones. Mm. We haven't been entirely. Uh, so. Yeah, it's just a, it's a, it's a it's a stupid conversation. It is. It's it's nothing will change. Yeah. These people don't like your letter, Stephanie. Do you want to give Ooh. Stephanie the pair of limited edition no. Sunny's no. courtesy of a long no, no, no. Which letter do you like to award I the, the uh, prize to? Oh no, no, hang on, I don't want to give it to her. The druggy one. We don't want to give it to her. We want to give it to number one, I reckon, Pete Evans. Pete Evans. Pete Evans. Yeah, Pete Evans. Yeah, Pete. Makes a Silence over here. We've so got to go. Thank all of our wonderful panelists. Bye. Thank our terrific crew, and thanks for having us tonight. Adios. In your living room. Good night, Australia. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for being here, guys.
Terrific. Yeah. Thanks for coming. That's all right. <laughs>